The game is do not let the great baby boomer complex go bust. Do not let the system implode. We have to offset falling trend rate of GDP by higher debts at government level to maintain the economic structure that we have. We can't pay for that, so we have to print money to do it until this population bulge is left behind and we change the structure of economy. So there's the game. So the game is understand that. Forget all the other things that people talk about. It's all f noise. It's all mid-curve. Don't mid-curve it. Buy and hold, things go up. And the, the, the far right of that is they go up because of so much evidence of what they're trying to do, why they're trying to do, and how the economy's broken and what it all means. Everything in the middle, I think, is mid-curving it. And it will cost you money. You, you will literally not be as wealthy as somebody who just understands the buy and hold strategy in the right assets, crypto technology. Raoul's perspective sheds light on the importance of understanding broader economic movements and the pivotal role of technology and crypto in wealth generation. With the global economy in a state of flux, governments and central banks are employing measures to prevent systemic collapses, especially considering the demographic challenges posed by an aging population. This strategy, while complex, is rooted in a history of economic policy adjustments aimed at stabilizing markets during periods of uncertainty. By examining past instances of economic restructuring, we can better understand the current approach to managing GDP and debt levels. It's not just about printing money. It's about navigating through a demographic shift with significant implications for the future structure of our economy. Before we move forward, if you're finding value in our discussions, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a like. It helps us bring more content like this to you. Crypto is the super trend. That is the one, the biggest gift we've ever been given as an investment for all of mankind. You know, I've expressed this so many times to you. You don't believe it when the market's down, rouse a moron. Why did he get us into that? Now it's back at all-time high. So, oh, he's a genius. No, it's the same bloody thing. I just born whole. I'm just the moron on the left of the bell curve. Just don't mid-curve it. And don't, don't try and do things you shouldn't be doing. Just buy and hold a core group of good assets. Knock, yourself, um, knock yourselves out on other stuff. The other thing is, you know, as I said, we've seen this cycle before, the financial repression. We've seen the cycle. Everything is cyclical. Everything comes down to basically two assets. A rich really comes down to one asset. But you need to be involved in technology. You need to understand what the hell is coming because it is going to change everything you do. Whatever industry it is, I don't care. It's going to change. And you need to be prepared for that. So how do I the future gets us from now to 2030? After that, it's a whole new future out there. If you are young, and I've given this advice before, knock your socks off. Go for it. Because there's no way out of this without investing in yourself, generating income, using that income to buy upside in these assets where we've been given the gift of massive asset rises in a secular trend due to technology. If you're a retiree, it's very difficult, right? Because you don't really know what to do. If you're a US retiree, well, you're in equities. But the good thing is they got you back. They know that you can't have your equities full 50%. They will debase the currency. I think basically you will be fine. I don't think your income will be what you want it to be from these assets, and you probably don't have enough assets. You know, the, those are the issues, and I, I don't really know how to help with that, except have a bit of risk in these riskier things, because they should offset some of the issues. And I know that the median pension in the US is minuscule for people who are 70 years old. And I, I know that's scary for people, and I know it's scary to have their parents in that situation. All of us have helped out our parents. But hopefully, if the central banks and the governments don't allow the assets to collapse, the struggle is going to be making those assets last long enough. So if people can have a little bit more in a riskier asset and less of a scarcity mindset of, hey, gold's going to help me out, it, it probably won't. It probably won't because of the debasement. Uh, and the fact you just don't get enough returns to live off. So anyway, just, and, and that sounds like really bad advice for older people. Just do it at the margin. 
I'm not asking you to put everything you've got into crypto, but just understand that it would be very useful to your portfolio, it's portfolio creative to have technology in crypto. And don't be as incredibly risk averse, be an equity. So like Russell 2000, that's going to get you nowhere. So yes, I know it's difficult. I know that many of you have to maintain an income as well, um, even into older years. I get it. I think that's the way of the world. I don't think that's going to change. Um, so there is no magic bullet here. Um, you can obviously move. I think that is one magic bullet that I've talked about in the past. Moving from high cost places to low cost places. I have no idea why there isn't a reverse migration to Mexico from the US. You know, cost of living is half the price, the third of the price. It's a beautiful place. So if you are retired, think where you live. I've talked about this before. This is this quality of life thing. You can live anywhere else outside of the United States and lower dramatically your cost of living. And then suddenly your wealth, relative wealth explodes. I did that. I went to Spain. I'd left the finance game. I certainly wasn't the richest man in the world, but I moved to Spain and I was like four, five times richer than I was in the UK because everything was cheaper. It was magic. So you can do that same piece of magic. So that was, that's the one big piece of advice is you can lower your cost base. Diving deeper into Raoul's insights, he emphasizes the transformative power of crypto as a super trend, one that represents an unparalleled investment opportunity for mankind. This isn't just about weathering market volatility. It's about recognizing the cyclic nature of financial repression and leveraging technological advancements to secure a prosperous future. To frame this within the current economic landscape, it's essential to consider the impact of financial cycles and technological innovation on investment strategies. The cycle of financial repression, where central banks keep interest rates low to stimulate economic growth, is not new. However, the pace of technological change we're witnessing today is unprecedented, making technology and crypto investments not just advantageous, but necessary for future-proofing one's financial well-being. Moreover, Raoul's advice speaks volumes to investors across different life stages. For younger individuals, the message is clear. Embrace risk and invest in yourself and the technological future. For retirees, navigating a low interest rate environment with escalating costs of living requires a strategic approach to investment that balances safety with the need for growth, underscoring the importance of diversifying into assets poised for long-term appreciation. Most people I see, I see on Twitter, argue about why the game is happening or the unfairness of the game. And that's all correct. It's not going to save you. You're not going to unk yourself. Just by saying, yeah, the Federal Reserve bad doesn't help you. What you actually need to do is figure out how to unk yourself. And that was the breakthrough for me with this everything code thesis and the exponential age thesis. What I started to realize is that the everything code was the understanding that they are financing all of the future. The everything code is really all about understanding that they are paying the interest on the debt by issuing more debt and that that ends up in the bank, the bank balance sheet. It was also the understanding that the world has become entirely cyclical now. The ISM cycle is perfect from one to the next. So we've got this amazing four-year cycle. It's actually three and a half years. And that was, in fact, driven by debt maturity. What we found is that after 2008, well, 2008 was a great reset, as we know, but it was also a debt jubilee. All of the major central banks around the world agreed to forego interest payments. That's what zero rates are. So they said, we don't need to pay interest payments because we need to rebuild our balance sheets. So they rebuilt their balance sheets by refinancing in the three to five year sector. And that's created this perfect cycle, this cycle, which is the presidential cycle, the Bitcoin halving cycle. It is the everything code cycle. That cycle drives everything. It's why I've been able to do so well uh, in predicting where markets are going, because that cycle is the liquidity cycle, the debasement cycle. It's all one thing, and it drives assets. Once you understand that, you understand most of the game that lies ahead. If you invest in assets that don't beat the balance sheets, the 15% a year, you're going to be losing money every year. So it's really important that that is your hurdle rate. And when you look at that, you suddenly real, realize that most assets don't beat it. The S&P doesn't really beat it. Gold certainly doesn't. Real estate unlevered doesn't. Most things don't beat that debasement. So if you invest in other things, you're going to lose money. 
And that's a hard lesson for people to learn. Most people don't understand this simple fact is you are getting poorer by investing in these things. And that was the big realization that got to me. It's like, oh my God, my whole macro world has been turned upside down because everything we thought was the investable asset became the non-investable asset. And everything we thought was non-investable because it was riskier became the asset. Because when you look at everything versus the Fed balance sheet as a simple example, there's only two assets that have gone up. And I've talked about this at length before. It's technology and it's crypto. So those are the things that we have. So that's why I've become so passionate about them. And really, it's crypto because it kills technology investing too. Technology investing is basically a way of being engaged in the economy, understanding the changes around us. So it's kind of important to invest in it. But really, the entire wealth is going to get made in one asset class. And I know a bunch of you can't stand it. I don't care. I'm trying to help you. And if you're not helping yourself, I, I just don't know what to do. The parallel Raoul draws between the current economic environment and the post-World War II era reveals a recurring theme. The power of economic cycles and financial repression as tools for managing debt and stimulating growth. The key takeaway? Investing in assets that outpace the debasement of currency is crucial for preserving and growing wealth. As we look toward the future, it's evident that technology, and specifically crypto, represents the vanguard of investable assets. This isn't just about jumping on a trend. It's about understanding the fundamental shifts in our global economic system and positioning oneself to thrive within it. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the economic insights of Raul Paul. We hope this discussion has provided valuable context and strategies for your investment journey. Make sure to subscribe to Unscripted Crypto for more insights and discussions.